What is going on guys? It is Steven, your semi-comprehensive guide here, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to speed up your PlayStation 4 console with an internal SSD. So if you have a PlayStation 4 console, especially one of the older models like I have right here, you may have noticed that it started to slow down a little bit over time. And this is because all PlayStation 4 consoles use hard drives as their form of storage. So hard drives are older, they are slower, and they're nowhere near as fast as these guys right here, SSDs. This is the new form of storage on the block. They're a lot faster than hard drives, and a similar form of storage is used in the PlayStation 5, which is why that console is so fast. So what we're going to do today is we're going to install one of these guys in our PlayStation 4 console, speed it up. It's going to increase our load times. It's going to increase how fast the PlayStation 4 turns on and just improve our overall performance on the console. Now, the kind of SSD we'll be using is called a SATA SSD. It looks like this. I'm going to have links in the description to a few different options that you can choose from. Now you don't need too much experience taking apart electronics to install an SSD. All you really need is the SSD itself. You're going to need a flash drive to install the PlayStation 4 operating system onto. You're also going to need a computer to use to install that operating system. You're also going to need a medium-sized Phillips head screwdriver. And then I'd also recommend having some anti-static protection. I'm going to be using a wristband in this video, but as long as you have a metal object you're discharging static onto while you're working inside of the PlayStation 4, you should be good. You may also need an additional flash drive if you need to back up your save data. Now, if you have PlayStation Plus like I do, all your save data gets backed up automatically to the cloud. But if you don't have PlayStation Plus or if you want to have an extra backup just in case, I will be showing you how to do that using a flash drive or external drive in this video. So without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. I'll first be showing you how to back up save data to an external drive. So if you already know how to do this, or if you already have your data backed up to the cloud, go ahead and skip ahead to this timestamp right here. Okay, so to start our backup, you are of course going to need a flash drive or an external drive to back up the data to. I'd recommend having something larger than around 64 gigs. Um, preferably closer to like 256, just in case you have a lot of save data on your console. Now, when we do the save data backup, keep in mind that we're not going to be backing up any of our games. Those are completely separate. We can re-download those back to the console after we've installed the SSD and we've reinstalled the PlayStation 4 operating system. However, our save data we cannot get back once it has been deleted, unless of course it's in the cloud. So that's why we need to do the backup before we actually start the drive installation. So to start, go ahead and plug in your flash drive into one of the front two ports on the PlayStation console. And then from the home screen, head up here to settings. Go all the way down here to application save data management. And then select the first option here, save data in system storage. Select copy to USB storage device. And select all the game save data you want to transfer over. Each game will have its own categories for save data, so you may have to go in and select all of those different options, uh, depending on the game and how the save data is stored. So just select all in most cases, and it'll just copy it all over to your flash drive. This may take some time, depending on how much save data you have on the console. And unfortunately for us, there's no way to transfer all the save data at once. You have to go game by game and transfer each save individually. If you were wondering how you can upload data to the PlayStation plus cloud you can also do that here just select the option upload to online storage and that will basically be the same process except it'll upload it to the cloud all right so once we've transferred all of our save data over to our flash drive you can go ahead and remove it from the playstation 4 console and that will have of course all of our save data on it so make sure that that stays safe and now go ahead and completely power down your playstation console. All right, so once you've backed up all your data and it is safely on an external drive or in the PlayStation Plus cloud, we can go ahead and install the SATA SSD. So to get started, make sure that your PlayStation console is completely powered down. Make sure there is no white light or orange light. Make sure there is no light at all. And then also make sure to unplug the power cable as well. All right, so once you've set your PlayStation down on a flat surface, we can go ahead and start the installation process here. So to start, we need to remove this plate right here that is covering the hard drive bay. To do that, just go ahead and push and slide it out away from the console. And once you have popped that guy out, you can go ahead and remove it, slide it a little bit towards you, and then just lift up. And you can set that plate aside. If there's any dust on it, by the way, you can go ahead and clean that off right now. Okay, so with the cover plate off, you can see that we have the hard drive bay right here. And there's only one screw holding it in place, this one right here with all the different PlayStation button icons on it. So just go ahead and take your medium-sized Phillips head screwdriver and unscrew that guy there. 
and just set it aside for the time being. And now you can just grab this little handle right here and slide the hard drive bay right out. And just go ahead and set that aside for the time being. I'm gonna move the console out of the way here just so we can go ahead and remove the hard drive. So this little bay right here, you'll notice there are two screws right here on this side and another two on this side that are holding the actual drive in place into this little bracket right here. So go ahead and once again, take your Phillips head screwdriver. Take those out and set those aside. If you have some kind of screw organizer, I'd recommend setting these screws in something like that. Okay, so with all four of those screws out, we can go ahead and just slide the hard drive out. Be gentle with it here. And then set it aside, once again, in an area that isn't too staticky and where it won't damage the hard drive. Because just in case um, the SSD installation goes south and we need to put the hard drive back in, you wanna make sure that's still functioning and we can actually use it to power on our PlayStation 4 console. All right, so now we can go ahead and put the SSD into that bracket. And the way you orient it is you're going to have the back of the SSD facing the handle right here. So where you see the ports right there, those are going to be on this side with the notch protecting them facing up. So that's gonna be facing up. And they're going to be on the open end of the bracket like you see right here. So it's going to look like that. Go ahead and take those screws once again and screw those into the SSD. Try to line up the bracket holes with the SSD don't screw each screw in too tightly. Go ahead and do it a little bit loosely to start and then go back and then tighten each screw once all of them are in. All right, and once you have installed the SSD into the bracket like so, we can now go ahead and bring our PlayStation 4 console back over here and just go ahead and slide the SSD right in there. Take that PlayStation symbol screw and put that back in. And then with that guy screwed in, you can go ahead and put the cover plate back on, set it down on top, and then push and slide until it clicks. And it should look like that. And there you go, you've now installed the SSD physically into the PlayStation 4 console. However, we have to now install the operating system onto that drive. So to install the operating system onto that new SSD, grab a flash drive, make sure it is empty, make sure there are no files on it, and also make sure that it is larger than 16 gigabytes. All right, so on our computer, we are going to install the PlayStation 4 software. However, first we need to make sure our flash drive is formatted correctly. So if you are on a Windows computer, just go ahead and right click onto your flash drive and go to properties and make sure it says FAT32 here where it lists the file system. If it is not formatted correctly, then you need to go to your disk management and then right click on the hard drive and then click format and then make sure where it lists the file system here to select FAT32. Mine's already formatted as FAT32, so it does not list that, but if yours is already formatted as NTFS or XFAT, then select FAT32 instead. That way it'll actually be compatible with the PlayStation 4 when it goes to install that software. All right, so with your flash drive formatted, go ahead and go to this website right here. This is the PlayStation support website, and on here they have a download for the PlayStation 4 console software. I am going to leave a link down below to this website so you can head directly to it to install this file. So make sure to go down here where it says PlayStation 4 console reinstallation file. Don't choose the update file. Choose the reinstallation file and this is going to go ahead and install the newest version of the PlayStation 4 software. So just click onto that and that may take a couple of minutes depending on how fast your computer is. All right so once the PlayStation 4 software file has finished downloading head to where it downloaded and it's going to be named PlayStation 4 update.pup. Go ahead and drag that over to your flash drive. This may take a couple of minutes just because the file is relatively large. All right so once the software file has finished transferring go ahead and create a new folder on your flash drive and name it PS4 like you see right here and then inside of that folder we're going to make another folder and we're going to name this 
update, all caps like you see right here. So now go ahead and take your update file and then drag it into the update folder on your flash drive. And then make sure that this is the only folder on your flash drive. So if you have any other data on here, either transfer it or delete it from the flash drive. So it should look like this, just PlayStation 4, just that folder and inside of here, we have update and inside of here, we have the ps 4 updatepup So now we're all set to go. Go to your flash drive and right click and select eject. And once that drive has been ejected, you can remove it from your computer and then take your PlayStation 4, plug it back into power and display, and then take the flash drive and plug it into one of the front two ports. Now go ahead and press and hold the power button on your PlayStation 4 console for about five to seven seconds. So you'll hear one beep when it turns on and then you'll hear a second beep when it goes to enter safe mode. And in safe mode, we can go ahead and reinstall the system software. All right, so once you have heard that second beep, the console should enter into safe mode in a matter of minutes here and when it is in safe mode you'll see this screen right here it'll just let you know that you need to connect the dual shock controller and you'll have to do this with a cable you cannot connect it wirelessly in safe mode so grab a micro usb cable connect it and then press the playstation button and then in here it's only going to give us one option the bottom one here which is initialize playstation 4 and reinstall the system software so go ahead and select that it's going to let us know that we need to plug in the flash drive and have the reinstallation version and where we can get it from which we already have so so we can go ahead and press OK. And it'll take a couple of minutes here to initialize and load in that update file. Uh, it's going to let us know that all data and users will be deleted. Um, in this case, there's nothing on the SATA drive right now, so that's fine. Of course, if this was a drive that you used for something else, then make sure that all the data is off because that is going to be deleted when we go to format this drive for use on the PlayStation 4. So. I am sure I want to continue, and it is going to install that software and initialize the PlayStation 4. Your PlayStation 4 will reboot a few times, and this complete process does take about 15 to 20 minutes, so just let it do its thing. And once it has finished, it'll take you to a setup screen like you see here. My camera decided not to focus, but um, basically just follow the steps as if you were setting up a new PlayStation 4 console. All right, awesome. And once you've gone through all these setup steps, we can go ahead and start up our PlayStation 4 console. Log in with their default user here. And then to get our saved data and games back on the console, we are first going to have to log into our PlayStation Network account. So the fastest way to do that is to go up here to our profile and then select sign in to PlayStation Network and just go ahead and follow the usual sign in steps. All right, so once you are signed in, go over here to settings, go down to application save data management. And then in here, if you uploaded your data to the PlayStation Plus Cloud, you're going to go down to save data in online storage. And then you're going to select download to system storage. And this is going to list your save data in the cloud game by game. So just go through, select the save data you want on your console and download it. Now, if we saved our save data to a flash drive, Go ahead and select the option down here, save data on USB storage device, and select copy to system storage. Once again, it is going to list the data game by game, so go in and download the data you want on your console. And of course, depending on how much data you have on that flash drive, it will vary in length for how long it'll take to download back to the PlayStation 4 console. And then once all your save data has been downloaded, you can go ahead and download your games back to the PlayStation 4. So go back to the home menu, and then go back to your library and then go down to the option that says purchased. And it's going to list all of the games that you've downloaded onto your PlayStation 4 console. So just go in here, download all the games you want on your console again. And I'm gonna be honest, I do notice the speed increase going through the menus, just on the home menu here, also downloading games and data onto the console. I definitely notice the increase in speed and the snappiness of that SSD in the PlayStation 4. It's definitely not gonna be as fast as the PlayStation 5. The console is still limited by its older hardware, but it's going to be a lot faster than that old hard drive you had in there previously. And that pretty much does it. Your PlayStation 4 should be running a lot more smoothly, a lot faster, and those load times should be a lot less as as well. Now, if you ran into any issues with the installation process, whether it be the software installation, the hardware installation, or anything in between, 
my best recommendation would be to start the process all over again. This is a long and complicated process and there are a lot of ways that you can go wrong with the installation. So it's usually best to just start from the top, start over again and try the installation process over if you run into too many issues. There's always a chance you could have a bad SSD or there could be some issue installing it in the console or a compatibility issue. So I'd always recommend hanging on to the old internal hard drive that was in the PlayStation 4 for a little while after you've installed the SSD. Even if it is working just fine, there could be some issue that you run into down the road where it just stops working. And it's always good to have this guy around as a backup. It's better to have a slow PlayStation 4 than no PlayStation 4 at all. Other than that though, that pretty much does it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like down below. If you love my content, be sure to subscribe. Other than that though, I've been Steven, your semi-comprehensive guide, and be sure to have a wonderful rest of your day.